All right, we're in the last page of the study guide, part six, unit 4.2 on area, volume, surface area, and similar solids. All right, so 57, a rhombus has diagonals that are 12 inches and eight inches, find the area. We could sketch that and do some stuff with the Pythagorean theorem, but we just really need to know that for rhombuses and kites, we can multiply their diagonals and divide by two. So 12 times eight divided by two. Let's see, it's gonna be what, 48 I think. Oops, 96 divided by two, yeah, 48. All right, so the area is 48 inches squared. In number 58, we are finding the area and perimeter of the trapezoid. And if you want, I mean, you really could break this one down into a rectangle and a triangle since it's a right trapezoid. But um, let's just pretend for a minute that we can't. If we use the formula for the area of the trapezoid, it's the average of the two bases. Um, so base one plus base two divided by two times the height. And you do need to know that. So 14 plus eight divided by two times the height, which is six. So let's see, 14 plus eight, ah, sorry. 14 plus eight is 22. 22 divided by two is 11 and 11 times six is 66. So that's the area. And again, that's gonna be in feet squared. All right, um, for the perimeter, that's just the distance around. So 14 plus six plus eight. Uh-oh, we have a problem here. Um, so we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of this side. So if I know this is six, and I can deduce that this must be six since this entire length is 14 and we said that is eight. Um, we need to do six squared plus six squared and take the square root. So six squared plus six squared. Well, I know six squared is 36. So double that and we're gonna get 72. So that is gonna be the square root of, oops, 72, which we probably want as, an, as a decimal to add it together. Um, so that's going to be about 8.485. So we're going to add to get the perimeter 6 plus 8 plus 8.485 plus 14. All right, so... We should get about 36.485 for that perimeter. And that's in feet. All right. 59, surface area and volume. So we can generalize the volume of any prism or cylinder as the area of the base times the height. And since this is a cylinder, the area of its base is pi r squared. So we can use pi r squared h. So the radius squared is 25. So that's like 25 pi times the height of 10. And that's gonna be what? 25 times 10 is 250. If we leave that in pi notation, we just get 250 pi, and that's gonna be in cubic centimeters. And if we multiply that by pi, that's approximately 785.5. Nope, 398 centimeters cubed. All right, so you should be able to write that in terms of pi as well as a decimal. Um, it's important to be able to do that either way. The surface area, which um, at the time I'm making this video, I haven't taught you guys how to find the surface area of a cylinder yet, but we know that each base has an area and that's pi r squared. Then this lateral area is going to be the circumference times the height of the cylinder. So pi r squared is just 25 pi, but there's two bases with 25 pi. So for the two bases, we get 50 pi. The circumference is 10 pi, because our diameter is 10 going all the way across the circle at the top. So that's gonna be 10 pi. 
and the height is 10. So this lateral area is 100 pi, 10 pi times 10, plus 25 plus 25, we get 150 pi. So we should have 150 pi centimeters squared, because it's an area. Um, if you were to multiply that through 150 times pi, that's going to be approximately 471 times 2, 3, 9 square centimeters. All right, number 60. Find the surface area and volume of the square pyramid. Oh, man. So this is 16. These are all 16 going around. Um, we're given the height of the pyramid. And um, I always like to do volume first because I think it's easier. So we said for a pyramid or cone, it's going to be area of the base times the height divided by 3 or times 1 third. Since um, the base of this is a square, it's 16 by 16, its area is 16 squared or 256 square units. We're not given units. The height is 15. So to find the volume, I'm going to do 256 times 15 and then divide that by 3. And um, instead of actually multiplying by 15, then dividing by 3, I'm going to factor a 3 out of that 15 in from the bottom. So I'm going to just do 256 times 5. If you're not comfortable with that, feel free to multiply. But we should get 1,280 no matter what. So 1,280 units squared. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. Um, the surface area... Because it's a square pyramid, we know all of these triangular sides are going to be congruent. So we basically have a square with four triangles kind of popping off of this when we construct the net. We already know that this is 16 by 16, so we already know that this is 256. What we don't know is we don't know the height of the triangle itself. We know the height of the um pyramid, but we don't know the slant height of this triangle right here, which is what we need. So in order to do that, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem with a triangle that we sort of construct from the height going halfway across the space. So if this is 16, this is going to be 8, and then that's our hypotenuse. So to figure this out, we're going to have to do 15 squared plus 8 squared Hold on, let me make sure I'm looking at that right. Yeah, I am. Sorry, the right angle is here on the end of this like kind of 3D triangle. So 15 squared plus eight squared, and then take the square root. So the square root of 15 squared plus eight squared is 17. So it turns out that this height here is gonna be 17. So if I find the area of just one of these triangles, it's going to be the base times the height divided by 2. The base is 16. The height is 17. Um, so that's like 16 times 17 divided by 2. And again, like I did up here, I can instead just divide this by 2 and get 8 times 17. And that's going to be 136. So each of these triangles has 136 as its area. So we could either just add those all up or do 136 times four. That gives us that sort of, those lateral faces of 544. Then add the um, 256, which is the base, the area of the base. So we should get 800 when we do that. So 800, oh man, I must be tired. Earlier I said unit squared for volume, it should be cubed. For surface area, it should be 800 units squared. It is Monday afternoon and I am pretty exhausted, so I hope I don't make any mistakes. Um, we got four more problems to do. 61, two spheres have radii of two inches and five inches respectively. Find the similarity ratio, the ratio of surface areas and the ratio of volumes from small to large. Remember the spheres are similar. So the cool thing about this problem is you never actually have to find the surface area or the volume itself, although certainly we have formulas to do that. What we can just imagine, if this is my sphere with a radius of two, I don't really know how to make it look like not a circle, maybe. 
<laughs> do that on it. I don't know. And then this is my sphere with a radius of five. Um, that's all I really need is the radii themselves. The similarity ratio, and we're going from small to large, is going to be the ratio of two to five. We always get that from that linear measurement. The surface area ratio is going to be the similarity ratio squared. So 2 squared over 5 squared, which becomes 4 over 25. So when we compare their surface areas, um, small to large, they compare at a ratio of 4 to 25. And then to get to the volume ratio, this is where we cube our original similarity. So let's see. 2 cubed is 8, and 5 cubed is 125. So we get the ratio of 8 over 125. And that is what we need to do for that one. Um, all right, I'm going to stop our video right here. And um, these last three problems, I'm going to do in a separate video, mostly because I have to leave work right now. Um, but I'll make one last video that won't be as long for this last page. So stay tuned.